Hi everybody, this is MXUX. I just wanted to show this great video of uh, the dash. And uh, I think this is just one configuration of the dash. I just want to let everybody know I have some bombshell information that I'm looking to confirm the release on the Lordstown Endurance. Massive positive news. I'm hoping to confirm it. I have believe I can release that I am 51% certain the Lordstown Endurance does operate its heating cab heating system with a heat pump, which the Lightning, Ford Lightning, does not have. And I've also made some comments in this video about regarding the, the composite bed in the Lightning, I mean, I'm sorry, in the uh, Endurance versus the bed in the uh okay this is mxux let's get into this video hi this is mxux i'm just going to start this out by going over this november 7 this is the detail on uh, form 8k on the stock sale and i'm just going to go through this i'm going to try to do it as quickly as possible explain what happened and how uh ride uh, went from a uh, joint venture uh, with Foxconn to uh, uh, a partnership. So this is uh, November 7th, and this is a big long firm uh, form, and there's a lot of information. In it. I'm just going to go through the summary in the beginning here. I've marked it up a bit. Entry into a material definitive agreement. So this is like the asset purchase, purchase agreement. Now, basically, what we have here is the common stock that uh, Foxconn bought, $70 million worth of it, is earmarked for general use by, by Foxconn, uh, by Lordstown. So that's a $70 million uh, cash uh, injection. The preferred stock is for an EV program which Foxconn wants, basically wants uh, Lordstown Motors to create a, a, a battery electric vehicle for them. I had said that this was the model uh, uh, C. I now believe that this is the model V. Okay, this is MXUX. This is the model V, which I do believe is the prime. This is one of the official Foxconn uh, videos on this. This is the model V. And this is a urban pickup truck. This is a grocery getter. Uh, I do believe that's going to be on the MIH platform. Whether it will use hub motors is another question, which it may in fact do, at least in the North American market. Just to give you an idea, this I do believe is the program that Foxconn is financing pickup truck, uh, light pickup truck that was announced during Ohanai Technology Day 22, uh, and that is the Model V. So anyway, you've got uh, the, uh, the common stock uh, is for general use by uh, Lordstown and uh, cash infusion, and then the preferred stock is for the uh, EV program, and that's a hundred million. You can see here a hundred million dollars of preferred stock. By the way, these purchases make Foxconn the largest shareholder. Uh, they have 19, uh, almost 20 percent of the company, I believe, overall. Steve Burns was the largest. Steve Burns now has 17 percent of the company. I was thinking to myself, I wonder if that's why he was selling shares to make sure that uh, they have to stay within uh, below a 10 percent ownership. Okay, this is MXUX. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Just uh, that idea of keeping the ownership below 10%, 9.9%. That at, at 10%, a principal shareholder is a person who any of them owns 10% or more. So this is the level that that agreement avoids by keeping that common uh, stockholder uh, interest at 9.9%. Um, the point is, once you hit that, 
Principal shareholders have significant influence over a company, allowing them to vote on appointing the CEO and board of directors. Uh, different from a majority shareholder, uh, principal shareholders are subject to special securities and exchange uh, commission rules uh, that pertain to insider trading. So the insider trading is uh, taken off the table. Uh, well, actually, it's still there, but the point is, Principal shareholders can vote to appoint the board of directors. So, in other words, Foxconn has no powers to do this with a 9.9% share. I just wanted to go over that real quick. And this is yet another safeguard for uh, Lordstown Motors hodlers uh, of the common stock, uh, or else they click into another category with more SEC oversight and filings and so forth, and, and evidently they don't want to do that. So you got $70 million going to uh, general use, $100 million going to uh, Lordstown Motors general purpose, uh, pre-development and design activities. Okay, so this implies that the hundred million is the start of the funding for uh, this program, uh, not the end. Uh, so we can move on from there. That is the that is how the stock splits up. Um, if we go down here, this is paid in tranches. Uh, as soon as they get an EV program budget. Uh, there's a uh, another tranche kicks in, and uh, this is the way the uh, investment is going to be worked by Foxconn. This is a what would be called uh, a direct foreign investment in an American company, and that has to go through a CFUS review. So they are going to have to do this in tranches. They have to keep it below certain levels to. Uh, Cephas can approve it, and then once that, and which it certainly will, I'm, I have no doubt on that. Uh, once that is approved, then uh, the direct foreign investment will, you know, vest more fully. They are. Uh, I got. I got a cutoff here. I got this blown up too much. They are. Um, this is pretty important. I want to go over this. EV program budget and funding milestones no later than May 7, 2023. That is quick. Okay. And uh, that's the fifth month of next year. So they're moving quickly on an MIH-based EV program. It is a priority. I do believe it's the Model V. They have said the Model V, I've read in other media, the Model V is going to be produced, it's common knowledge at this point, produced in in, the, in America for the American market. Other sources have said $170 million have been earmarked uh, for this uh, program. And, of course, this is the total amount of this is $170 million, this stock investment by uh, Foxconn. Um, now, uh, that's some basic facts on this. You can you can download this and read this uh, at your leisure. Now, uh, the investment provides board seats, okay? Uh, two board seats. These are, you know, rubber stamp board seats. They've agreed that these board seats will vote with uh, – the board of Lordstown Motors at all times. It's really more of a, uh, I, in my mind, an oversight board seat so that they know the internal workings of Lordstown Motors to their satisfaction. Uh, insider trading laws uh, are going to apply here because they do have board seats. And this very clearly implies a partnership uh, to me. Uh, and I don't believe they can call it a partnership. Uh, uh, well, I mean, uh, they're stating, uh, I have a quote coming to, later from Niavaji about the partnership. Okay, this is a Dan Niavaji statement about the partnership. Since announcing our first transaction with Foxconn more than a year ago, this is the sale, 
It has been our objective to develop a broad strategic partnership, strategic partnership that leverages the capabilities of both companies. Foxconn's latest in investment is another step in that direction. Lordstown Motors Executive Chairman Dan Niavaji said in this statement, Strategic Partnership. Uh, this is uh, part of the preamble, I believe, to the last earnings call. For, all, for everybody who says, you know, it's not a partnership, a rose by any other name. Again, we got to have the Cephas uh, direct foreign investment improved and so forth. I think there will be uh, a more detailed agreement on the partnership forthcoming. In any event, uh, Dan Niavaji defines it as a strategic partnership. Okay, that's it. I believe the Cephas approval has to go through and so forth, and the direct foreign investment has to be approved uh, before they can, you know, uh, announce a, a, a partnership, and uh, I believe they're going to have terms on this, but I'm not a lawyer, uh, certainly not a corporate lawyer. You're going to have to do that own, your own DD on that. Uh, so Foxconn's going to have two board members. There's some requirements here. It relinquishes its board seat if it do does not continue to beneficially own 25% of the number of shares of common stock. At least 50 at least fifty percent of the number of shares of common stock. Well, anyway, the point is they are maintaining uh, a balance of the stock, and uh, the terms of this agreement say they're allowed to, as more stock is issued, they're allowed to buy the stock to maintain their nine point is it nine point nine interest in um, the common stock. So if they get out of that stock, then they lose their board seat. So uh, I think Niavaji has crafted this very carefully, along with Foxconn. It's a very, in my mind, an even-handed uh, agreement. Uh, but uh, the point is. These are rubber stamp board seats. Uh, they imply a partnership for for sure, and they have to maintain certain balances of stock to hold these seats. Okay, and here's a note on the termination of the. So they've done away with the joint venture agreement. Okay, and the funding has been transferred into this direct investment rather than going through a joint venture agreement. I'm going to go through this uh, a bit later, I believe, but if not, the difference between a joint venture and a partnership. A joint venture is viewed uh, as a short, a, a relatively short-term association that's generally put together to reach one uh, specific goal or one, in this case, one product or uh, one battery electric vehicle, a, a partnership, uh, that is why you would have a joint venture agreement. Uh, again, uh, short term, focused on one project. A partnership agreement is considered to be long term and has a broad focus on the relationship between the two parties. And, you know, getting rid of the joint venture and moving to uh, uh, this uh, partnership, and I'm going to call it a partnership. You know, Reddit is the pit toilet of the inter Internet, and um, there, uh, I, I just want to say one thing here. The SEC is just uh, filing charges against some YouTubers that were doing pump and dump schemes. We have uh, social media uh, that is being manipulated by short sellers, and this includes bots. There are uh, when I am uh, go on the Lordstown Reddit, it's such a negative experience because there are so many negative comments and and uh, fud inducing comments and if you look up these redditors uh, they're non-existent these are bots and uh, the same thing with the comments on my videos i investigate these negative comments they're from blank youtube accounts 
So there is a technical uh, manipulation of uh, the information that's getting out in the stock market. You can look at uh, my podcast, uh, Was Misinformation, uh, published uh, on Lordstown Motors for another take on that from me. But uh, again, the SEC is only addressing one side of this problem. It is my opinion that there are there's a dark uh, dark web a dark business web and and they're using technology uh, to gaslight hodlers and manipulate stock prices. That's all I'm going to say on that. I'm not going to get on a big thing on that. But be aware if you're holding Lordstown Motors stock or I think Faraday Future is another example of this, but. Any stock that's highly shorted, uh, there are bots. There is uh, there is artificial intelligence that is trying to get you to sell your stock. And I think a perfect example of this, you look at Elon Musk's purchase of Twitter. And look at the AI. Look at the bots. Look at what's going on there. And look at... You know, Matt Taibbi, I was just watching an interview, is going through the stack of information. You know, the, the, the parties behind the scenes that are manipulating that uh, Twitter information. And how many people get information from Twitter? Now, uh, Matt Taibbi is talking about the FBI and Homeland Security. In my opinion, the major hedge funds and... and uh, uh, major banking interests uh, and any uh, any of these major short uh, shorting firms, they also are having this level of influence. And I don't know why the SEC is sitting on their hands on this. Uh, it does. It is a. It is stock manipulation, in my opinion, and. Uh, misinformation and again organized automated artificial intelligence i'm just going to say this if you hold a lordstown motors if you see a negative comment please and it affects your feeling on the stock investigate that commenter take a look at who they are what is their history I, 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 I delete comments uh, all the time from uh, YouTube videos I put up because these are blank uh, members. They, 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 you know, they're new members. They have no likes. They have no nothing. They have no contact information. They have no nothing. It's just a blank account that spits out a uh, – looks uh, many times looks to be a computer-generated message on the stock. I'm just going to – I'm going to stop right there. So – Anyway, uh, getting to this, uh, so the board seats require a minimum ownership uh, of the stock uh, to hold. And uh, basically, uh, in my opinion, this takes shares off, like 25% of the shares off the exchange, off NASDAQ, uh, because they're required to hold these shares under this agreement. And that should put a floor in on the stock. However, when you have a, uh, a a large a large number of holders, hodlers of Lordstown Motors or retail investors, and you're getting gas, uh, in my opinion, do your own research. I'm not telling you to buy, so, sell, or hold. You're getting gaslighted. Investigate the source. So anyway, we've got this agreement set up to put a floor on the stock price as much as they can, uh, keeping it below the uh, 10% level. So uh, I think everyone should uh, say, see this and realize that uh, this is part of this agreement. Uh, a summary, th this payment or services deal with additional requirements to initiate the MIHEV program uh, that uh, – LMC will operate for Fox. It looks like 50-50 funding for LMC general uh, use towards the endurance and MIH Fox BEV program startup. So that's basically what it looks like. Uh, more funding is going to be required, I say, here on the Fox program. Fox is required to be a hodler or will lose the board seats. 
and inside information uh, on the ongoings of Lordstown if, if it if it does not. So, also, Fox puts restraints on the hub motor tech. LMC cannot license or or, or sell uh, the hub motor tech as a, a result of this agreement. That's a big deal, in my opinion. And Fox is urgent about LMC expediting the MIHBV programs. So the, the combination of these two with the requirement on the hub motors and the MIH programs, it, are the hub motors going to be involved in the MIH program? Because uh, Lordstown Motors does have a license, I believe, for tr truck use. Uh, for the uh, hub motors, and if they are producing the uh, Model V, well, there you go. Um, I believe the uh, the hub motor stuff is in the next section. But I hope that was uh, interesting to you. Again, you can get this online. Now, this is a second. There is a standstill. Uh Fox will not acquire any equity securities if after uh, and has owned the prior 9.9%. Uh, so in other words, they can't do a takeover of Lordstown Motors. They can't uh, after in 2025, it, it, this expires or changes, but they can only maintain this balance of uh, under 10% of the outstanding shares. Okay. So, there's not going to be any takeover by uh, Fox. Exclusivity will not, uh, Lordstown Motors will not facilitate any acquisition proposal. So there's not going to be a buyout and there's not going to be any acquisition. And this runs till 2025. Okay. So here's what you got you got, uh, Foxconn hodling 25% of the stock. Uh, you've got, uh, they, they cannot do a takeover. They're going to maintain their 9.9% balance, and they can increase that and keep that proportional share if, if more shares are issued. And Lordstown is not going to do an acquisition. So you can look at Lordstown stock as saying it, there's not going to be a takeover and there's not going to be an acquisition. So this stock has room to grow. Again, for hodlers, uh, this is from uh, fin Fintel or whatever the name of the site is. Again, more reason. This is institutional ownership of Ride. Okay. April, August, December, April, August, December. Here we are in December 22. Can you see the trend? Can you see the trend? Uh, the, the, this is yet another advantage for hodlers. Okay, and we've got a floor put on the price uh, in, in some effect by the 25% ownership of Foxconn, who is required to hold the stock. So really what you have is an environment where Lordstown stock is set up uh, to be, uh, I mean, the risk factors are reduced by uh, and reduced down merely to funding uh, under this agreement. Uh, and there's voting rights. And, and again, Foxconn is going to vote with uh, uh, the the board. It's a rubber stamp vote. Now, here's the important thing. This is Lordstown Motors would not sell, license, lease, or encumber any material portion of the company's hub motor technology and production line, other than in the ordinary course of business. This is important. They have they have made a point of putting this in. Uh, this agreement because they know how important and how revolutionary these hub motors are. And I think, again, if they're going to do the Model V, although the uh, MIH platform has a variable power uh, drive system, electric motor, but uh, if they're going to use hub motors uh, for that system, uh, that would fit with this implication. But I would also add, under the joint venture agreement, um, 
Lordstown Motors has the North American, Canada, USA, and Mexico rights to distribute the truck, and that is the biggest truck market in the world. Uh, Foxconn has the international rights to distribute uh, the endurance. Okay, and um, I have learned some things about the specs of the endurance. I'm not sure if I'm going to put them in this, but there is uh, this is a bombshell to the positive on the endurance specs. I'm trying to verify this information. It is breathtaking. Okay, and. I'll just reveal one thing I think it's, it's safe to talk about here. The Endurance does have a heat pump. The Ford F-150 Lightning does not. Keep that in mind. That is such a massive improvement. According to the information I have, absolutely has a heat pump. Um, so they have uh, also put a stay on the hub motor technology. So there's not going to be a takeover. There's not going to be an acquisition. Fox is going to hold a, a you know 25% share of the company, uh, and they're not going to short it or sell it, and nobody's going to do anything with the hub motors. And this is, all takes place under the terms of this agreement uh, till 2025. The agreement can be terminated by either party if the initial closing has not. Okay, so they're talking about... Uh, termination and mutual consent so they just put a deadline here drop dead date so let's just go through my summary fox has to stay within the percent limit of ownership they could buy more stock but also so it's they got to maintain this ratio of 9.9 uh, percent there's going to be no hostile takeover or buyout therefore by foxconn you don't have to worry about that as a shareholder LMC agrees it will not accept an acquisition. Okay. You're not going to have to worry about that as a shareholder. Uh, Fox board members will rubber stamp whatever LMC, uh, LMC board members say. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the uh, hub motor line, whatever the, the hub motor, this is very favorable, I believe, to Lord Sun Motors. Hub motor line tech license is all frozen. So, uh, as a as a hodler of Lordstown Motor stock, for example, if you're holding this stock, you don't have to worry about an acquisition. You don't have to worry about a takeover. You don't have to worry about somebody taking over the stock at some low price. It's not going to happen. And the key internet uh, intellectual property is not going to be sold or transferred. Uh, so this is all uh, until uh, 2025 at a minimum. Okay, this certainly can be extended well beyond that, and it may be by a formal partnership agreement. Uh, so it looks like uh, LMC will be in charge of the MIHBV program uh, with a Fox rubber stamp. In other words, Lordstown Motors, as, as per my org chart, uh, is going to take these battery electric vehicles from concept right up to pre-production people into production. I do believe Lordstown Motors Corp. is going to take a major role also in quality control and setting up the assembly process for these vehicles. Foxconn is going to do the supply line and supply the assembly uh, machinery and workers. Okay? I think this is a model for... Uh, future North American battery electric vehicle programs for Foxconn. Okay, this is electricdrive.com, November 8, 22. I've highlighted a bunch of stuff in here about the increase. Uh, Foxconn, the largest shareholders at 18.3%, surpasses Steve Burns with 172 So, uh, yet another uh, safeguard for uh, Lordstown shareholder hodlers, okay? I wanted to go over these two points in this article. Foxconn thus states it would deepen its relationship between Lordstown and the EV development platform. That is the MIH platform. Uh, in the future... There will also be opportunities to share Lordstown technical resources with other customers to further expand MIH EV ecosystem. 
Foxconn is quoted as saying in the Reuters report, in other words, Lordstown's know-how and services are apparently to be offered to third-party customers using the, M using the MIH platform. This is my org chart, which I put up in the last video, which I've been saying uh, for a long time, that this is the arrangement between Lordstown Motors and Foxconn. Lordstown CEO Edward Hightower specifies that third-party customers will be offered skills of Lordstown's vehicle development team, including all critical elements of market introduction, both prototype pre-production vehicles and commercial production phases. Okay, uh, some of these Elmer Fuds on Reddit have been arguing with me about this. Here's a third-party source. It is going to be, as in the last, as per my flow chart, Lordstown Motors is going to take it all the way from conceptual drawing to pre-production vehicle, going to plan the assembly steps, is going to do the quality control, and then Foxconn is going to take over with MIH, uh, MIH software, infotainment software, so forth, uh, supply line, and... Uh, assembly staff. So this confirms what I've been saying. This is that you can look this up yourself. And uh, let's just move on to the next section here. Uh, conclusion: uh, This pretty much freezes LMC Fox relationship and relationship status till 2025. No takeover, no acquisitions. Hub Motor Tech stays where it is. Fox ownership limited to a fixed percentage of outstanding stock. Uh, you know, if more stock is issued, they can keep it within this same ratio. Uh, Fox has board, seater, board seats, so full inside information, but will never vote against any board decision. And uh, funding here is split between LMC general use and initiation of a MIH BEV program. I do believe that is the Model V uh, pickup truck uh, premiered at the Han Hai Technology Day. 22. Looks like Fox has given the reins of its BEV programs to LMC at the worldwide Lordstown hub, and that is Fox, Ohio. A stable base has been set for ongoing development of BEV programs at Fox, Ohio. Uh, note, LMC will have enough funding to launch the endurance. Will LMC have enough funding to launch the endurance into production? I just want to say one thing here. I just read an interview with Adam Kroll. Adam Kroll basically said they have all the, according to Dan Avaji, they're missing some small parts, some, some small uh, supply line problems. According to Adam Kroll, they have all the materials set to build the 500 units. Okay. So uh, they're very careful with the money, uh, the, the money use at Lordstown Motors. They absolutely, positively are going to produce with this capital infusion. And having heard this uh, from uh, Kroll, they they are going absolutely, I would say 100%, I usually say 51%, 100%, they will produce the 500 uh, vehicles that were stated. Uh uh, will the fly? Will the sales revenue flywheel be enough to fund ongoing production? So, in other words, once they produce these 500 uh, vehicles, uh, will there be more orders? I think there are a lot of pending orders for this truck, especially by fleets. You can look at my fleet demand, uh, Lordstown Motors secret weapon ride, secret weapon fleet demand video. I mean, it's just crazy what the demand is. <clears throat> will there be revenue from Global Fox distribution of the endurance? Yes, there will be. Okay. Now, uh, DJ Dan has said the last two calls, they're looking for an OEM partnership, uh, looking to partner with an OEM. Partnership is being worked out to fund mass production to scale the endurance. Is this partnership going to be the Fox? Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the Scout under the VW uh, spinoff. The uh, and I, I, I would say, in my personal opinion, 
51% chance that's one of the partnerships. So the, the funds they raise uh, from doing this development work uh, will go towards the ongoing production of the endurance, hard tooling, and so forth, along with the uh, funds provided by this cash injection. And, um, you know, depending on how Krull does the bookkeeping, I mean, I think he can probably push this money around anywhere he wants, although it's supposed to be divided between these two programs. I don't, I think, as I said, I believe a partnership uh, agreement will be coming out on that. Partnership is being worked on to fund mass production and scale the endurance. Now, Fox, uh, in my last video, Fox has also said this separately, that they are working on uh an OEM partnership. And by the way, uh, I think them being in a partnership facilitates a third-party partnership easier than being in a joint venture with Foxconn. But anyway, uh, so I have what the FINI is going on here. Will there be a partnership agreement or is this uh, just investment or just this investment agreement? As I said, I do believe there will be a partnership agreement. I think it will come after the Cephas approval because they really don't even have the investment, the full tranches of the investment until they get the, the Cephas approval for the direct foreign investment. Okay. And um, I think uh, once that's put in place at some point after that, I think they're going to be issuing uh, a more formal partnership agreement. Although this is a pretty, uh, well, the well structured agreement here. Uh, so they have this ag investment agreement to work with. Um, uh, I, you know, Dan Niavaggi said very clearly, and I'm going to try to put a quote in this video. Pursuing a, a, we're in a strategic partnership with Foxconn. Guys, you can pause this and read this. This is the preamble I was talking about. To you know, they're pursuing. Um, Foxconn's goal of the 5% domination of the BEV uh, market by 2025. Uh, so, anyway, um, but um, I think this is, again, you can review this at your leisure. I'm just going to put up what this is. This is an 8K. I think this is very good news for hodlers. And I did leak that one, and I got a massive leak on the endurance coming. Heat pump. The Ford F-150 Lightning, no heat pump. You know, when the temperature drops below 40 degrees, Ford F-150 Lightning loses 50% of its range. I don't think that's going to be the case with the Endurance. And I'm going to tell you why. For, for a number of reasons. First of all, this heat pump is much more effective than their heating regime. I mean, without having a heat pump, that truck is useless, believe me. But the second thing is, the Lordstown Endurance has a composite ba bed. I think this has actually an insulating effect, an R value, to protect the battery below uh, the bed. The Ford F-150 Lightning has a aluminum bed. It's like a beer can. It's meant to conduct cold. It is just sucking all that cold. And then when snow falls in the bed, that 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 bed is uh, the temperature of that bed is is dropping to probably below thirty two degrees with with the wind blowing on it. And then that is transferring right into the battery below it. You know, there is there's nothing going on there that's doing any kind of insulating uh, uh, for that battery, and that that cold is just radiating down on the top of that battery. I think that's part of the problem with the uh, uh, with the F-150 Lightning. That all aluminum construction, <laughs> you know, that's what you make a heat sink out of, right? Or a cold sink, right? Anyway, all right, that's this section. This is MXUX. I, uh, I hope you liked that. Humbled, honored to be approached by many small and big players in the industry. So for those of you who are getting tired of this, Sorry guys, there's going to be a lot more coming. Foxconn Ohio facility possessed an excellent opportunity to meet the high demands. What we are proud of 
Of course, the size of our factory, fantastic location, but you know my opinion, most importantly our people.